thankful to the uh, organizer who has uh, given me opportunity to share my view uh, on the topic minimal invasive surgery starting from nadi yantra to nowadays uh, laparoscopic surgery before going to start my talk i once again thankful to the all the members especially some are my teacher uh, professor b r tripathi sir is here i uh, bow my head in front of him and uh, all senior faculty members uh, who had uh, who has joined this uh, webinar series uh, today's webinar series so uh, without taking much more time uh, i'm going to start my talk uh, the technology has some advantages definitely some advantages but uh, it also has some disadvantages uh, and uh, we are facing some problem uh, uh, during my uh, presentation and initial stage of my presentation this is also a advancement of the te technology associated with the some disadvantages similarly in laparoscopic surgery nowadays is a very common procedures in, in a, it is a boom in surgical field and uh, it also has uh, uh, some uh, uh, definitely it has a, a big advantage but uh, it also has some disadvantage i will discuss this thing uh, in my later presentation so what do you mean by uh, uh, minimal invasive surgery uh, uh, the human desired to be the minimally harm and surgically but uh, uh, three four decades before there is a big dictum uh, especially for the surgeons a big surgeon hello respected participant please may mute yourself Oh, yeah. uh, if the all person are muted then i can talk so uh, initially uh, three four decades there is a big dictum uh, in reference to the surgeons a big surgeon making big incision but hello can you hear oh. me sir? yes yes, yes. you are audible sir okay so but in present scenario uh, it is not like that a big surgeon always try to minimally harm to the patient so there is a day and this is the need of the present uh, day so we all trying to whatever we did surgery uh, over the patient and we try to trauma make a trauma over the patient we try to uh, minimally harm to the patient so this is the aim uh, of the minimal invasive surgery and this thought makes a foundation of what is now referred as a, a minimal invasive surgery there are so many other name related to the minimal invasive surgery and initially it is called keyhole surgery also or pinhole surgery in britain uh, this is uh, named as the banded surgery it is a uh, more uh, the uh, banded that means ki uh, the surgery is very popular bandit surgery is very popular uh, uh, terms for the laparoscopic surgery and it is so called as the size of the incision is so small and that one suture the wound can be covered uh, with a, a small adhesive strip so it is called also the bandit surgery and it's a modern surgical technique in which operation are performed through a small incision and usually the incision we put in case of the milvan invasive surgery or laparoscopic surgery is uh, it is uh, from 0.5 to 1.5 cm in majority of the cases we use the 5 mm trocar or 10 mm trocar we adopt the laparoscopic surgery only by with the uh, in most of the cases with the help of the 5 mm to 10 mm trocar in some specific cases there may be need of the bigger uh, uh, trocar like uh, 1.5 cm trocar 
But in most of the cases, it is uh, generally covered uh, in between 0.5 to 1 centimeter. And this is as compared a large incision need to traditional surgical procedures. So the another word is the laparoscopy. What do you mean by laparoscopy? The laparoscopy word is made up by two words. One is the lepra, that means the flank or side, and the scopy by scope to see. So laparoscopy is an operative uh, operation performed in the abdomen or pelvis using a, a small incision um, with the aid of the camera and the telescope at diagnosis or therapeutic intervention with a few small cut in the abdomen. So with the help of uh, this small incision and with the help of the some instrument, uh, we, we, did, we performed the laparoscopic surgery. The minimal invasive surgery or laparoscopic surgery are currently being increasingly used for the wider and wider application. Initially, this laparoscopic surgery started only for the diagnostic purpose. But nowadays, it is for the therapeutic purpose. And uh, in present scenario, most of the surgical cases, the surgeons try to did with the help of the laparoscope. So it is necessary to have the knowledge of the basic procedure and their limitations and also their indication along with the contraindications. But if you go through the concept related to the minimal invasive surgery in Ayurveda, Susut Achar Susut, a great surgeon, philosopher and teacher of ancient Indian practice around 600 BC. Achari Shusut is a renowned all over the world for his contribution to the surgery in general surgery, in plastic surgery, in orthopedic surgery, and many more. And in particularly <laughs> specific <laughs> surgery, <laughs> particularly <laughs> rhinoplasty. <laughs> but his contribution to the endoscope is not well known to the medical world. And whatever, this, this is unfortunate. It is very, very unfortunate. The concept of the endoscope related to the our ancient uh, authors, Susrut, this was not been known by the medical world. So Susrut was performed first surgeon in the world to describe different types of the surgical instruments, including the endoscope. And this is for beyond the imagination of any other surgeons at the period of time and obviously he was the far far ahead of his time in the field if we consider the whatever the period of the susrut and whatever the technology and scientific uh, background available at those period our uh, our <laughs> science <laughs> I request to the, all the participants kindly uh, uh, mute your, yourself, otherwise some noise are coming in my talk. So please, please, I request to the uh, participants and uh, please mute yourself, otherwise it is very difficult to uh, talk. Uh, Dr. Devadi, my voice yes, is... Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. So... <clears throat> If you go through the different type of the instrument which is described in Ayurveda, mainly we classify the, uh, uh, these instruments in, under the two headings. One is Yantra and another is Sast. We all know the Yantras are blunt instrument while Sastras are the sharp instrument. And their design, and there are many things, they learn from the, our nature. And according to nature, especially the design of the instrument they learn from the wild animals and how they catch their uh, their uh, shikar uh, so on that basis they have designed the shape of the instrument and also the nomenclature uh, they uh, the nomenclature these instrument according to their shape especially on the shape of the uh, face of the wild animal so uh, here, the uh, 
under the heading there are different type of the uh, uh, yantras described uh, nadi yantra are one of them and nadi yantra uh, the shape and their types susut has described their anek prakarani anek prayojanani ek to mukhani ubhay to mukhani but whatever the function described by susrut is that is excellent and it is very very practical in present scenario also the four functions described by Acharya Susu, that is the Sruto Gat Salyo Dranartham, Rog Darshanartham, Achushanartham, Kriya Sarokartham Cheti. These four functions, still it is uh, very, very practical in present scenario also. And none of the any uh, hollow instrument or laparoscopic instrument or endoscopic instrument are apart from this function. All the function which uh, whatever we uh, perform in present scenario, they all comes under these four function. So what do you mean by Slotogat Saludrakam? There is the use of this Nadi Yantra for the extraction of the foreign body. Rogdarsanantram for the inspection of the diseases. And Achushradatham that is we suck the, some fluid uh, from the body cavity or whatever the uh, uh, body parts. And the most important, which is very, very, very common in present century, there is the Kriya Srokartam, that is the therapeutic purpose. We also use these hollow instrument, or Nadi Yantra, for the therapeutic purpose. The, what is the difference of uh, these uh, Nadi Yantra, or we can say the innovation of the Nadi Yantra in present scenario? Here we given an example of the one instrument that is Arsho Yantra, which is described by Shusur, for, uh, which is uh, uses for both the for the diagnostic purpose and for the therapeutic purpose in anorectal diseases, especially in the management of the Arsh. They have described this, uh, uh, this instrument. But as the advancement of the technology, there is a, in Susut has described this uh, Arshu Yantra in 5, 000, uh, 500 BC. But due to the advancement of technology in 1700 uh, AD, the uh, rigid sigmoidoscope developed. And this sigmoidoscope is helpful for only for the diagnostic purpose, not for the therapeutic use. But due to the advancement of this technology, now the surgeons and the uh, scientists or researchers, they develop the newer form of the uh, Arsu Yantra in the form of the fiber optic colonoscope or sigmoidoscope or other. So with, these uh, with the help of this instrument, we not only diagnose, but also we perform the some therapeutic uh, purpose uh, Therapeutic uses we also perform with these instruments in present scenario. So this is one of the, the if you consider the principles of these instruments or the function of the, these instruments, whatever Susu described, it is still uh, alive in present scenario also. But wh what is changing? Only changing of the advancement of the technology. The medical sciences adopt these changes and accordingly, they develop our instrument uh, uh, for uh, the uses for the therapeutic uh, and for the surgical point of view. So this is the advancement, not the function and whatever the fundamental principle is, is still same. So this is the advancement of the technology. I would like to brief about the history of the laparoscopic surgery. If you go through the literature, and whatever the history of the laparoscopic surgery, it is only 100 years of the journey, last 100 years of the journey. And it is difficult to credit one individual with uh, uh, the pioneering of the laparoscopic uh, uh, approaches. So the journey is started in the beginning of the uh, 20th century in 1901, the George Kelling and Dresden, which is from the Germany, performed the first laparoscopic procedure in animal model in dog. So this journey is started in uh, 1901. <laughs> then after in uh, 1910, Hans Christian 
and Jacobius of the Sweden performed the first uh, laparoscopic operation in human. So this is the first recorded uh, laparoscopic procedure in human in modern literature. I'm not uh, uh, telling the Ayurvedic concept. Ayurveda has uh, used thousand years before um, uh, in a, uh, uh, the Nadi Yantra in human also. In 1947, Raul Palmer, the first publication of the modern diagnostic laparoscopy, and in 1917, followed by the public answer of the Hans Fengwin and Kurt Sam, who both practiced the carbon dioxide hysteroscopy. So uh, the, there is a big journey uh, near about 70 years after then they used the carbon dioxide for the purpose of the laparoscopic procedures. In 1967, Patrick Steffway, one of the uh, pioneer of the IVF was important in popularizing laparoscopic in the United Kingdom, and he published a textbook, Laparoscopy in Gynecology. The use of the laparoscopy initially for the diagnosis of the gynecological uh, diseases and also for therapeutic use for the gynecological, some gynecological procedures. And it was later in the general surgery, but initially it was limited to the gynecology. In 1972, Clark invented and published, patented, presented, and recorded on him laparoscopic surgery with instruments marketed by the uh, Venn Instrument Company of Buffalo, Newark. In 1975, Franz Kuni from the Department of Ops and Gynecology of the University of the Passion Fundo Medical School started his experience with the organ resection by laparoscopy and he did the salpingectomy first reported in the third American Association of Gynecological Laparoscopy uh, meeting. In uh, uh, November 1976, and later published in the Journal uh, of the Reproductive Medicine in 1981. And this laparoscopic surgical procedure was the first laparoscopic organ transaction reported in medical literature. Now, the main uh, the boom comes after the same. Sam was also a gynecologist, and uh, uh, even though uh, he, 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 his contribution a lot in the field of the laparoscopic uh, surgical procedure, not only he, he described the many laparoscopic surgical uh, procedure uh, for different use, but also he has designed different instrument, instruments for the uh, laparoscopic procedure. Sam performed the gynecological clinic in, in Kale University, Germany, performed the first laparoscopic appendicectomy in 1981. And Sam uh, con uh, constructed a pelvic trainer uh, 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 with the lapro trainer, a practical surgical uh, model where the colleagues could be practiced the laparoscopic uh, uh, surgery. But one uh, very important uh, history related to uh, Dr. Sam. Dr. Sam uh, from the gynecological clinic, uh, clinic of the Kane University, Germany, uh, he performed the first laparoscopic appendicectomy. Following his lecture on laparoscopic appendicectomy, the president of the German so Surgical Society wrote a letter to the board of the director of the German Gynecological Society, and he suggesting suspension of the same from the medical practice. You can imagine the same has presented a technique, newer technique, but the president of this association, they have written a letter to the uh, uh, higher authority for suspension of his uh, medical practice. Not only that, when 
the same has tried to publish his uh, first laparoscopic appendicectomy in American Journal of the Obstetric and Gynecology. His paper was rejected and unacceptable for publication on the ground that the technique reported on was unethical. So the author the, uh, rejected his uh, his uh, publication, quoting that this procedure, this laparoscopic procedure, is not ethical. It is unethical. So he not published his uh, uh, paper in reported journal. But finally, this paper is published in the Journal of the Endoscopy. So same uh, same has uh, uh, taking a, a lot of burden of uh, his uh, development in the field of the laparoscopy. Same also established several standards. Once again, I uh, say, organizer, kindly mute the some uh, participant. I also be disturbed by the voice coming in the uh, पंकज बर्मन सर आप बाकी सब को म्यूट कर सकते हैं इफ दे आर नॉट डूइंग इट वॉलेंटरीली इट इज वेरी डिस्टर्बिंग फॉर यस आई अंडरस्टैंड सर सो सेम इस्टेब्लिश सेवरल स्टैंडर्ड प्रोसीजर्स दैट वेर रेगुलरली परफॉर्म सच एज ओवेरियन सिस्ट इनिकुलेशन ऑफ द मायमेक्टोमी in fibroid uterus treatment of the ectopic pregnancy and finally laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy uh, he also developed a medical instrument company and designed many instruments uh, during his career and in 1985 he constructed a pelvic trainer that is called lapro trainer uh, a practical surgical model where the colleagues could practice the laparoscopic technique. So uh, this is a very initial uh, thing for the yogya purpose. When uh, we did the open surgery and the uh, uh, there is a big difference between open and uh, laparoscopic surgery uh, is in open surgery, whatever we did, we touched the tissue, we assessed the tissue by hand. But in uh, and uh, in laparoscopic uh, surgery, there is uh, uh, no any touch sensation. Only we feel with the help of the instrument. And there is one big difference is uh, you see somewhere and adopt your function in different uh, uh, different place. So there is need of the eye and hand coordination uh, for the uh, performing the uh, laparoscopic surgery. And for that. Uh, uh, same feel the there is a uh, if the newer surgeon if they not be able to uh, eye and hand coordination they never be succeed in the field of the laparoscopic surgery so for that he has designed the pelvic trainer and it is still very useful in present scenario also the this pelvic trainer so uh, his uh, journey is started from the uh, as a gynecologist and he developed 80 medical devices invention. He also de designed, uh, developed the electronic insufflator, thermocoagulation, loop ligators, laparoscopic suturing, and allowed more complex procedure to be performed endoscopically, endoscopically, gynecology, and in general surgery. So the whatever the boom, it is it started from the work of the uh, came and especially in the uh, 1980 uh, and uh, in between 1980 and 85. Then on that basis, the uh, uh, before the same, uh, uh, the laparoscopic procedure is limited to gynecology. Same also we started the some general surgical procedure, especially he started the first uh, general surgical procedure from appendicectomy. But in 1985, Enrich Muhe, who was the professor of the surgery in Germany, performed the first laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And afterward, the laparoscopy gained rapid acceptance for the non-gynecological application. So this is another uh, turning point uh, in the history of the laparoscopic surgery. Uh, by Enrich Muhe, 
but uh, the first laparoscopic cholecystectomy uh, performed by Henry Skuhe, it takes near about eight hours for the uh, first laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy because at that time there is the learning curve is uh, very very uh, uh, long and they are not very tuned for the eye and hand coordination and also the uh, sophisticated and delicate uh, our energy source was not available at that time so it takes long time but in present sense you know uh, there is a uh, newer development of the energy source and many other equipments our camera also be very very advanced uh, form of the camera three chips and many uh, other light source are very advanced in, in present scenario so our uh, the duration of time for the laparoscopic surgery is reduced and many uh, well uh, trained surgeon they performed in present uh, lap cholecystectomy in uh, 7 to 8 minutes in uh, present scenario so this is the advancement and the uh, this is due to the practice uh, of the uh, laparoscopic surgery now, in 18, 1987, uh, got first laparoscopic repair of the inguinal hernia. And uh, inguinal hernia surgery initially uh, in general practice or in open surgery, it is considered as a minor procedure. But in uh, laparoscopic procedure, initially it was considered as a complex procedure because uh, the surgeon initially performed the extra per peritoneal approach of the inguinal hernia surgery with the help of the laparoscope. And at that time, it is called uh, TEP, TEP. But now it is the, uh, the, uh, the surgeon generally perform the uh, transabdominal approach, TAPP, and uh, it is uh, uh, comparatively TEP to TAP is better. And the assessment, assessment is also be very uh, good in. Uh, so in, uh, nowadays, inguinal hernia surgery is very uh, common with the help of the laparoscopic procedure, uh, laparoscopy. The uh, first lap hysterectomy was uh, performed by the Rich in 1989. And the first transatlantic surgery, the surgeon are not limited up to the only laparoscopic surgery, but the there is a robotic surgery. And it is also a form of the uh, laparoscopic surgery. And uh, with the help of the uh, modern tech, uh, technology and tools, the transatlantic surgery first performed in 2008. This is also called the remote surgery or robotic surgery have since become more common and more rapidly laparoscopic procedures. Uh, uh, so this is the question. What is the advantage and benefits of the laparoscopic surgery? Definitely it reduces the post-operative pain and analgesic requirement due to the very minimal uh, invasive in nature. So the tissue we very uh, minimally incise the tissue uh, for this procedure. So post-operative pain uh, is very, very uh, low. And uh, uh, also the requirement of the medicine is very low. <coughs> Sorry. It reduced the operative trauma also. Reduce bleeding because due to the uh, very good visibility, ten folds we uh, uh, bigger we can view the uh, internal organ with the help of the uh, laparoscope. So we uh, the visualization is very good. So we can uh, minimal there may be chance of the minimal bleeding in the laparoscopic surgery. Faster recovery, discharge and return to the work is very fast in laparoscopic surgery. It also reduces the wound infection, seroma formation, which is very common in the uh, open surgery. And also the hematoma formation, if we not uh, care about the bleeders at the time of the closing of the wound, there may be seroma and hematoma. If we badly handle the tissue uh, uh, during the open surgical procedure, seroma is very, very common uh, post-operative complication. All these things are reduced in the laparoscopic surgical procedure. Uh, in laparoscopy, also reduce the chronic wound pain and less cardio uh, respiratory complication due to the faster surgery. Initially, definitely uh, the learning curve is very uh, high, but nowadays, uh, uh, generally, uh, uh, 
the portable, the, even though the bigger procedure they perform within time are faster than the open surgery with, uh, with the help of the laparoscopy. The uh, another uh, big advantage of the laparoscopic surgery, especially in uh, laparotomy, there is less chances of the less cilius uh, from uh, reduced handling, because here we uh, we not handle the uh, whole abdominal uh, bowel uh, during the laparotomy, but uh, we only uh, take the handling or we can uh, touch the it is so limited to the uh, our operative field and definitely it improves the cosmesis and reduce the contamination of uh, theater stuff also interest and the uh, uh, another is the interesting for the surgeon any newer thing the it is a human nature we try to adopt this newer thing especially if it is uh, associated with the some benefits and not it is limited to the one interesting for the surgeon, but also it is interesting for the society also. There is demand of the society for the laparoscopic surgery in present scenario. The patient comes and they want to minimal harm or uh, short duration for their uh, operative procedures. So it is also the uh, interest of the uh, public and Laparoscopic surgery reduces the outpatient and social cost overall. If we if we not take in the uh, uh, energy sources and other devices, which is very very costly in present scenario, but overall the the general procedure, uh, the hospital stay and other time, uh, if we take in time, all these are very uh, economical as comparison to the other. But some. Uh, 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 advantage related to the patient uh, in uh, general surgery, it reduces the risk of the deep vein thrombosis because the, the operating time is comparatively less uh, as compared to the open surgical procedure. It reduces the incisional hernia rate. But uh, uh, in few cases, we also be noted uh, especially uh, in laparoscopic surgery, if we not uh, close properly the especially the uh, the 10 mm port which is close uh, the supramolecular or inframolecular port if you not uh, close properly the seat there may be chances of the incisional hernia otherwise uh, the uh, incisional hernia uh, rate is very very low in laparoscopic surgery fewer adhesion and less likely to develop obstruction Better visualization definitely for the surgeons. These are the advantages of the uh, laparoscopic surgery. But uh, also there is some disadvantage risk for the laparoscopic surgery. It is high risk for the collateral injury, especially the uh, there is a boom in the uh, cholecystectomy uh, with the help of the laparoscopy. And if we not judiciously uh, use the uh, energy sources, uh, uh, during the laparoscopic cholecystectomy or other procedures, because uh, if we uh, not taken care of the energy sources, uh, especially uh, suppose if we did uh, the energy source in uh, laparoscopic, energy sources are very close to the uh, common bile duct. And there may be a chances of the injury of the common bile duct uh, during the uh, unjudicial use of the energy source in laparoscopic cholecystectomy, And it may be complicated in the post-operative, third or fourth post-operative day, there is blowout of the uh, wall by ischemic and necrosis, wall of the CBD, and there is uh, biliary leakage. So this is the, uh, some disadvantage. And bowel, bladder, vascular injury, especially at the time of the first insertion of the port. If you not care, there may be chances of the bowel injury, bladder injury, and vascular injury also uh, by the sharp instrument, especially at the time of the trocar placement. But nowadays, uh, these things are reduced by the visual optic trocar, use of the visual optic trocar. So these things also be reduced. Uh, 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 with the uh, presence of the this uh, especially designed trocar, uh, which we uh, put under the vision. Virus needle injury, 
it is also be associated with the ball bladder and vascular injury and diathermy may lead organ damage especially in the late cbd structure and uh, uh, either some leakage also initially uh, the operation time uh, increases but as per the practice and as per the learning uh, and as per the better eye and hand coordination this time day by day reduces. I have already quoted the first cholecystectomy performed by who uh, takes near about eight more than eight hours, but now it, uh, approximate time for 15 to 30 minutes. And a good surgeon they can perform a very uh, they took very less time, approximately eight to uh, seven to eight minutes. So uh, operating time is gradually decreased uh, definitely in, in initial stage it takes a long time operation uh, time so in endoscopic surgery uh, there is a long learning curve when this surgery is popularizing in uh, the world the majority of surgeons are they are not tuned for the uh, their teaching and training in the laparoscopy but in majority of the uh, institution they uh, uh, the surgeon or the, the department, they are practicing the laparoscopic surgery uh, in various diseases. So the learning curve is gradually reduces. The exposure is uh, uh, more and more. So learning curve is gradually reduces. And some surgeon is not uh, able to develop a skill. Some surgeons are very strict. Just, uh, I can say in a hernia surgery, the open uh, uh, the surgeon who did the open uh, herniotomy or herniotherapy, they uh, say why we are wasting the time for the uh, hernia uh, for uh, uh, in hernia surgery uh, by laparoscope because it takes uh, long time. Also, it is not be economical to the patient. So uh, they generally uh, uh, try to prefer the open surgery in hernia. But if we not to tune uh, for the uh, these uh, technique uh, day by day so how we will de uh, develop a skill for the future uh, so uh, if we did the uh, this procedure in our routine practice then we develop a, a good skill in particular and also we reduces the time not only time we also be more advanced and more sophisticated and more uh, or we can use judicially the uh, different uh, uh, laparoscopic instrument in surgical procedures. Increased cost due to uh, theater time and equipment. It depends on in initial state due to demand. loss of the tactile sensation. This is a problem in uh, part. And many, uh, the, especially the newer surgeons, where the, uh, the uh, when they're training is for the laparoscopy they almost uh, forget the tactile sensation because they never be touch the uh, tissue and they never be know about the uh, textile there. and uh, in general surgery we many surgery perform with the help of the tactile sensation we hold the tissue we uh, touch the tissue and then we differentiate uh, the tissue uh, perception of the tissue uh, by the touch but in laparoscopic surgery this uh, loss gradually so there is some uh, another contrast uh, indication of the laparoscopic surgery there is some absolute as like the uh, general surgical procedure but uh, absolute contraindication is uh, Uncorrectable uh, coagulopathy, frozen abdomen, intestinal obstruction with the massive abdominal distension, hemorrhagic shock, severe cardiac dysfunction, and concomitant disease in requiring the laparotomy, where it is uh, uh, absolutely contraindicated. And some relative contraindication if the patient is inability to tolerate the general anesthesia. But uh, in many places, the uh, some laparoscopic procedure uh, they also did under the spinal anesthesia, especially the lower abdomen, and in some places the uh, lap coli also we did the spinal. But ethically, it is not be uh, promoted because the it is associated with the some major complication uh, which happened due to the higher uh, spinal anesthesia. 
So abdominal sepsis and peritonitis, it is uh, not be uh, indicated. Multiple previous abdominal operation, there may be chances of the adhesion, so it is contraindicated. And if the patient suffering from severe COPD, and uh, then pregnancy, definitely the laparoscopic procedure is contraindicated. Insertion related to the complication like major vascular injury uh, near about 2 to 0.25%. GI injury, especially perforation by the trocar or virus needle, it is reported near about less than 1% also. In some cases, bladder injury. And these uh, uh, complications, initially it is more. But nowadays, gradually, the percentage of these complications are gradually reduced by the experience and by development of the confidence of the laparoscopic surgeon. The CO2 embolism and abdominal wall hemorrhage also be the post-operative complication. The another thing is the recent advancement in the laparoscopic surgical age. Initially, just a, suppose we, I can give an example for the uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Generally, uh, we uh, perform the laparoscopic cholecystectomy with four port or three port. It depends on the different surgeon. But uh, the some uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, uh, researcher they developed the single port laparoscopic surgery, also known as SILS. But it needs the some other specific instrument for performing uh, the operative procedure with the cells. And it is just like a, a, a it's just like a sirsasan. Uh, if we perform the anything with in a normal fashion, so why there is need of the sirsasan? So uh, uh, many of the surgeons <laughs> they discarded uh, this procedure. Uh, sills uh, like single port surgical because uh, the working area is very limited. Uh, with the single port and uh, uh, the instrument are also different for the uh, single po uh, port laparoscopic surgery. So this procedure is not very much popularized in uh, present scenario and many surgeons that discarded uh, for use of the single port laparoscopic surgery. And <clears throat> nowadays, the, there is a recent advantage of the laparoscopic surgery is the surgeon try to uh, operate by the natural orifices uh, or transluminal endoscopic surgical, especially uh, like transanal, if there is any anorectal surgery or uh, even uh, rectum sigmoid, up to the sigmoid, they did the with the help of the transrectal uh, uh, approach and transoral approach also we perform the some upper GIT surgery. So <laughs> there is uh, try to use the natural uh, orifices or transluminal endoscopic surgery in present scenario. This is the recent advantage of this. So now, <clears throat> question is arises, especially for the Ayurvedic surgery. Why there is need of the knowledge of the laparoscopic surgery? Why we stick only for the open surgery? Because, uh, as per the gadget notification, definitely it is a, uh, by the uh, government of India. Uh, they have given the permission, especially the Ayurvedic surgeon, to perform the appendicectomy and cholecystectomy. And in advancement of the stage, if we not uh, uh, learn the newer procedure uh, for the operation of these uh, diseases, especially appendicectomy and cholecystectomy, if we stick uh, only for the open surgery, the, uh, in day by day, none of the patient comes in your hospital for uh, operating these things. So you must be learned and must be equipped or must be advanced yourself for learning uh, uh, the laparoscopic uh, surgery. For performing whatever your limitation, whatever the diseases which is gadget notificated by the government of India, uh, these diseases you can perform uh, or these operative procedures you can perform with the help of the laparoscopy. So the, uh, there is need of the advancement of uh, your knowledge. And our literature also be supported these things. Ekam sastram madhyano na vidyat sastra vinishche. Tasmat bahusustra sastram 
vijanya chikitsaka if we not be uh, able to uh, perform any uh, medical practice with the help of the one literature or one sastra so the surgeon or physician must be go through the other literature and other sastra for uh, increasing our knowledge or in the skill also and also uh, 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 acharya susut has uh, uh, evocated for the increase of our uh, knowledge there is four component is very very essential these are the satata adhyanam vada partantra avalokanam tadvid acharya seva there is continuous medical education this is our old concept the medical the paternity they adopt the continuous medical uh, education continuing medical education in present scenery but our uh, acharya this is thousand years back for our knowledge there definitely uh, it is not be limited to the uh, four years five years or whatever that uh, uh, schooling is uh, uh, the medical practice need the continuous medical education for the discussion for what we are here we discuss here uh, the some diseases and in conference we discuss the uh, some newer technique and other thing partantra avalokanam we definitely la uh, learn from the other uh, sources or other uh, contemporary sciences so uh, uh, all these things are uh, described in our literature for increasing our knowledge so why not we use these things or uh, whatever the advancement uh, in present scenario we incorporate our uh, uh, procedure or uh, our skill for the betterment of the patient so the question is uh, arises how will we develop our skill and for that uh, there is uh, also there is description of the yogya practical surgery in our text and susut has clearly mentioned adhigat sarva shastrartham api shishyam yogyam karakari without practice without uh, practical knowledge you can't perform the surgery over the patient and what is the model of the practical model they have clearly mentioned tasmat kosalam vada chinna shastra charagni karmasu yas yatriya sadharma this is very very important things ki we practice our yogya we practice our surgical procedure yes yeah. sir your voice is not audible sir gupta sir your voice is not audible hello gupta sir sir uh, i think uh, my slide is uh, ha uh, now not it is not visible sir you can just conclude with no problem sir yes, yes, yes. almost one or covered everything one or two slide is more so okay. i am once again trying to now it is visible or not no sir no sir. okay कोई बात ना सर यू कैन स्टार्ट योर कैमरा वीडियो नाउ एंड वी कैन जस्ट हैव आवर फॉर्मल डिस्कशन सो ऑलमोस्ट माय टॉक इज कंप्लीट कैमरा कैमरा शुरू कर दीजिए सर स्टार्ट वीडियो ओके 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 जस्ट अ मिनट आई हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड माय वीडियो बट आई एम नॉट यू कांट सी हियर हम्म anyway sir your voice is very loud and clear you can continue just a minute i am audible am i yes sir aawaz aa rahi hai sir okay so uh, uh, 
there is some technical problem so i i would like to conclude my talk with this uh, phrase ki whatever the advancement uh, in uh, surgical field for the establishment of our ayurvedic we must be uh, incorporate these things in uh, uh, our uh, surgeons and especially for the newer uh, budding surgeons uh, these things also be incorporated otherwise jaise hum kahe ki if you not run with the uh, present scenario you may be discarded by the uh, time so if you not update yourself uh, with time you may be discarded by the public or by time so for that for the uh, existence you can learn and more and with uh, for learning there is no limitation you can practice the uh, doctor card mahit participant please mute yourself हाँ बोलिए सर शिवजी सर हाँ बोलिए बोलिए सर हाँ सो आई कंक्लूड माय टॉक डॉक्टर द्विवेदी विद दिस वर्ड uh and especially thanks to the organizer and uh, all the uh, members of um uh, respected ajay gupta ji hello ha yes dr devedi ji सर आप थोड़ा सा एक कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क आज के सेशन का बीइंग एन चीफ गेस्ट यू कैन जस्ट कंक्लूड विथ योर काइंड वर्ड्स ओके ओके जस्ट आई टेक टू मिनट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वांट टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट प्रोफेसर शिवजी गुप्ता सर फॉर सच ए आई ओपनिंग प्रेजेंटेशन एंड वेरी सिस्टमेटिकली ही हैज प्रेजेंटेड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द विजन ऑफ ग्रेट फादर ऑफ सर्जरी अबर आचार्य शुशुत जी what was the hidden uh, laparoscopic uh, talent by the name of nadian which uh, by scientific innovations uh, it was it has been improvised technically and today it has it is being practiced uh, by very eminent surgeons now i want to to highlight a few things dr gupta has dr shivji gupta sir has uh, very systematically he has explained all the things it now uh, this uh, laparoscopic surgery has become gold standard approach for various surgical procedures and basically there are three reasons becoming gold standard number one there is the decreased post operative pain and number two uh, very lower uh, rate of infection rates and number three the hospital stay is less and besides these lot of advantages are there with already uh, shivji gupta sir has very rightly told and uh, besides the uh, trauma is less tissue respect is there homeostasis is very nicely maintained the very better maintenance of homeostasis of the body is there and uh, of course the mental trauma great positive impact on the patient psychological status is there uh, regarding his quick re recovery when he returns to the job so quickly one another one point in one minute i'll want to highlight for the pg students who are participating in this uh, uh, shalya sambhaza for pneumoperitoneum mostly carbon dioxide is used the advantage is it is used for proper visualization of the contents and it is used because it is cheap it is re uh, readily available it is non combustible it it is easily absorbed by the tissues because it has got high diffusion coefficient and it is quickly released by Uh, respiration also so there is very low risk of gas embolism and uh, although there are some other options also nitrous oxide is there and to a bit which supports combustion helium is there but helium there are complication related to some cutaneous emphysema and uh, there is some sort of risk for gas embolism argon is there but argon sometimes it may cause cardiac depression so lot of things are there and uh, definitely 
laparoscopic surgery it is a, it has created new dimensions and in the coming years we will be seeing the robotic laparoscopic surgery being practiced very popularly so uh, in short i once again i thank the organizers i thank the audience for listening this talk of professor shivji gupta sir very scientific talk so patiently and i uh, uh, say my namaskar to my seniors and uh, especially professor amar divedi ji dr wadge ji from iia delhi and uh, dr barman and all my colleagues seniors and juniors and again thank you very much organizers for organizing such a nice sambhasha now it's over to you dr divedi ji dhanyawad sir uh... शिव जी है शायद अभी वापस ज्वाइन हो गए सो वंस अगेन आई विल कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट यू सर कि दिस इज दर्स्ट टाइम दिस इज दिक्स चैप्टर ऑफ दिस चले संभाषा एवर सिंस इट हैज बीन स्टार्टेड and uh, today is we found houseful you can appreciate that around 50 to 60 participant were uh, waiting to get into this uh, uh, shambhasa but uh, we could not add them because of the uh, constraints of uh, numbers and bahut acha aapne jo journey bataya hai nadi yantra se laparoscope ka that was wonderful and we are uh, actually fortunate to have of uh, many dignitaries who have attended today's program one of them is my brotherly friend rajesh gupta ji who is wonderful surgeon in maharashtra and he also do the gynecological surgery is also so he is very popular person and uh, subhas vasne ji was there almost all the national uh, executive members of shalya uh, uh, sambhasa and vishwayarit parishad was attending this including mahesh vyas ji surendra choudhary ji everybody was there and you have given a wonderful I'm lecture okay. sir so i congratulate you for this uh, as we are uh, lacking of time there are many things i mean ajay sir has already said uh, this journey started from george kelen if you see Uh, he has only started with the diagnostic uh, laparoscopy just to visualize the stomach and the esophagus part and in those days they were using oxygen for insufflation so from there the basics now they have advanced it to the very wonderful stage and even the learning curve has a uh, reduce a lot uh, i'll just share that in my initial days as we all agree once we become ms we have got lot of passion about the laparoscopy so even i was part of it i started laparoscopy uh, did my learning curve completed around 30 cases of cholecystectomy unfortunately to my first case which i did independently in dy patil around 2005 i lost my patient not because my procedure error but the patient could not came out of anesthesia and that was the black day of my life and i decided not to do laparoscopy thereafter uh, dr shiv ji has visited my institute we have got wonderful simulation lab where even the anadi can get mastery get into mastery uh, laparoscopic into procedure but somehow, somehow i left laparoscopy but definitely laparoscopy is you know the future of uh, general surgery now it is not a super specialization but it's a basic every surgeon should get uh, uh, trained into laparoscopic procedures because as gupta sir has already said ki ab agar aap laparoscopy nahi karte hain to patient aapke paas aayenge hi nahi तो वो बुरा दिन ना आए इसलिए हम सबको बेसिक लेप्रोस्कोपी आना ही चाहिए सर हैज एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग राइट फ्रॉम द आयुर्वेदिक पर्सपेक्टिव वेयर द इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन द नेम हैज बीन गिवन एज पर द एनिमल्स बाइट एंड ऑल एवरीथिंग हैज बीन कवर्ड सर नथिंग टू एड ऑन दिस once again thank you very much both of you as i said you are the ashwini kumara of uh, ayurved i can say both of then uh, both of you are the product of uh, esteemed institute banaras hindu university i have seen both of you operating cases and uh, you both uh, attend many live workshop the surgeries and you are wonderful surgeons and we are fortunate that uh, uh, we have uh, 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 surgeons like you in ayurved and uh, once again thank you very much to 
all the participant who spared time uh, my uh, our uh, zonal coordinators the senior surgeon like dr datta trai rao from uh, uh tirupati dr barman from assam dr yogesh badwe ji from india uh, all india institute dr amit from pune so we have we are pan india surgical fraternity coming on one single platform uh, given by vishwa ayurved parishad i am also thankful to professor govin sahay sukla ji who is right now president of uh, uh, national president of uh, vishwa ayurved parishad i am also thankful to my brotherly friend mahesh vyas ji who is the general secretary mahasachiv of vishwa ayurved parishad thank i am thankful to yogendra mishra ji who is organizing secretary thankful to kk divedi ji and i congratulate kk divedi ji for being uh, nominated as nci as a member uh, uh, recently he is joint organizing secretary of vishwa ayurved parishad and with this uh, dr surendra choudhury ji and dr anil shukla ji who is the national convener for vishwa ayurved parishad so i thank all of them and thank you all of you for attending this uh, program and uh, uh, i can see your, my uh, my friend uh, dr sushil vaigragade also there dr sheetal is there so many eminent surgeons from the field of ayurveda they are part of today's uh, wonderful uh, feast of knowledge by 